So for less than $20, you can buy an M-Tech knife made out of decent stainless steel. I had to buy three. First one I bought was too soft and I couldn't hold a good edge. But the second two that I bought actually had really good stainless material. Um, anyways, you can turn this cheap knife that actually has a pretty decent sheath uh, into a really good bushcraft survival knife with just a hammer handle. Uh, why am I making this video? This knife has all the components that you would ever want in a good bushcraft or a survival knife. It's got a flat grind on both sides, which means you can turn that into a convex bevel on both sides of the knife. Um, the handle is really uncomfortable, so you can't really use this as is, but you can easy enough reprofile the steel portions of the full tang in the handle, and you can make it, you know, suit your hand with a simple angle grinder. You can use a knife, excuse me, you can use a hammer handle as your scales. You just got to cut one in half, sand it flat. That's good hickory. That's probably the best wood that you can have for a handle or knife scales. That cost $4 at the Menards. Anyways, you got a good, you got a good starting point right here for a really good knife. Um, you want stainless. You don't want stupid tool steel. I see all these knives made out of D2 and O tool steel. Those all have like really fine grain, tiny, like, it has like really tiny grain patterns, which is good for a tool, but your tool steel knife, it cannot do this without like breaking in half. You can't put a knife made out of tool steel in your bench vise and abuse it and bend it like that and not have it crack in half. So if you want a baton, if you want to use this as like a chopper or an axe, you're going to need something that's tough and flexible. So I don't know what kind of stainless steel this is, but it holds an edge well enough. It's sharp. Um, anyways, uh, there's some attributes about this knife that are really, really good. It's got a tip of the knife in the middle of the handle, so you can actually push down. And, you know, where you're pressing your point of force is going to be like right you know, in the middle of your, of the handle of the knife where you're actually pushing. Um, it's got holes for fasteners in the right place where if your scales, your knife handle ever failed one day, you can wrap this thing up really good with like paracord or shoelaces or rope and you'd have like a good, you know, easy to make handle without having a wood shop, you know, at your disposal. And it's got a lanyard hole. It's big enough to actually serve as a lanyard hole. <laughs> Um, it's full tang. It's thick enough. Uh, yeah, this is a good, this is a good knife. It's just not comfortable. So we're going to make it comfortable and it's going to rock. Here's an example of one that I made comfortable using a hammer handle. And this thing, this thing rocks no matter how you hold it. This is a good knife and the steel in this knife is good. All right, here's your knife without the scales, the M-Tech, your O1, your D2, S7, A2, whatever tool steel you used, your knife cannot do this without breaking it. Like the grain structure in tool steel will not allow this to happen. Here's a good one. Tip first. Where are you? Come on. Not bad. Anyways, your tool steel knife can't do this. The harmonic ringing, the resonant frequencies that it sees when it's being dropped in the ground like that, it will just break. All right, so if all those drop tests didn't convince you, uh, hearing all that harmonic ringing and resonant tones the knife makes while it's bouncing off the ground, you know, doesn't, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if the dots don't connect in your head, here's what's going on, all right? So, 
these new metals, LMAX and I don't know, these powdered metals and tool steels, they're really good at holding an edge. Um, but so is this hardened 400 series stainless steel. Um, I would argue this is better. Uh, this is tougher. It's not as strong. It's not going to hold those edges long. But you can put an edge on it pretty easily. Uh, probably easier than, you know, using one of those super metals or powdered metals. Um, but again, it's tough. And the resonant frequencies that it, that it endured being dropped off the ground, hitting the ground tip first. Oh, there's another one. Um, that's important because shit's going to happen one day. And you want a knife that's going to be able to take it. And sure looks like this is one that can take it. So before I invest any time in making scales for this knife and changing the grind of the blade, I'm going to make sure that it's freaking tough. That one's tough. Okay, so I put the time into making some handles and scales for these knives and shaping the tang so it fits my hand my hand ideally um yeah these are chinese and this one that i bought wasn't really any good at all it had a bad heat treat and it was soft and it wouldn't hold an edge i would argue that's useless but i got to try something out with it and uh, i'm glad i did because now i know if it works it does and I know what to expect from it. If I ever needed to do it again, I wouldn't hesitate to do it. Um, I like the way this handle feels. This is this is like the very you know top portion of a hammer handle. Uh, here's another one that I made out of a hammer handle, and uh, it's a little bit bigger, and my fingers squeeze evenly, you know, all around this handle. This one I can hold. This one I think is the best handle. Now now I know, you know, whatever. I'm like an amateur knife builder and you don't know what you know until you know it. Um, yeah. Anyways, so I think this is like an incredibly valuable knife right now on the market. The M-Tech MT2070. Uh, I think it's got a lot of things going for it that are good. Uh... Uh, again, it's made in China, but this is kind of made in, in Illinois now. The good old USA, kind of, sort of. Like, this one I made out of a branch from a maple tree in my backyard. Uh, again, you know, I, I know these knives are good, and, uh, I you know, I put some time and energy into kind of, like, making new handles and stuff for them, but I'm happy. Uh... And this cost me virtually nothing. I think altogether with, you know, materials, each one of these things might have cost me $25. That's good. Uh, it, I had to put some time and energy into it, but I have restless hands. So <laughs> it, it helps me deal with my restless hand syndrome. Anyways, guys, uh, check out these M-Tech knives. The first one you buy might not be that great. Uh, they're cheap enough, though, you can buy a few and maybe you can cherry pick the best one out of the bunch. Um, I, I, I like these things. I think, I think these are good tools. I, I, I really do.